I wouldn't say that's like the most confident I felt. I mean, like throughout the whole entire season, I began building my confidence, and then it really started like really started back in January when like Ja, Jalen, Coach Debo, Coach Flag, Coach Heatherman like would all talk to me and say like, "You are who we, like you know you are." So um, I think I think really my preparation really brought me to that moment. Like I think I've been confident throughout the whole entire season, going to UNC, going to this game. And then keep on preparing, keep on having like my technique right and everything. It keeps me super confident. So I just try to stay confident, like I'm confident as I can be. So yeah. How big of a challenge was the run game that Purdue got there? And just you had a lot of options, including the quarterback running the ball. Yeah, it's diverse, but um, our preparation throughout the week definitely propels us to do whatever they throw at us. So that's all we're focused on is our preparation for the game. Oh yeah, it probably keeps them on a swivel a little bit. Yeah, it's it's really fun. You got a bunch of guys that can play a bunch of positions, and then you got a bunch of guys that can rotate in. I mean, it keeps everybody fresh. Like you see, Ja, Ja, and me, like we rotate in a good bit, and that's just it keeps the game fun, and then also it makes us play super fast. What do you think was the biggest carry from Sydney from the goal line between the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs? Um, I would say just our connectivity. I mean, like. This in any poised moment, I mean, we were poised in UNC, not saying like anything, but like, uh, just like in preparation too. This, like, if we can find one little thing that we can exploit, then we can exploit it. How important is, uh, how much of a threat the quarterback run game is to the system for you guys to kind of get too deep into rushes and make sure that you can't break away from it? Again, it just goes back to preparation. I mean, we're just locked in on our preparation. So, like, no matter what happens and no matter what they throw at us in any, like, situation that comes our way, we just prepared in the moment. We prepared in practice. So when it happens, we're, we're all ready. This is your last non-conference game, and I expect they have a big time play next week. Is there a danger of looking ahead at all? No, I mean, the whole entire team looks as this is the biggest game of the season. I mean, it's a one-game championship, so that's how we look at it. And that's how we prepare. You came in and played four games with the, uh, the punt return or one of the kick return returns. Is, is that kind of the game here and the vibe you guys brought? Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a great kid. I, I love Koi. I mean, we all make jokes like about Koi, and like he's like our savior. He's, I love the kid. His personality is so dope, and like it's just fun being around him, especially like him being a freshman. Like sometimes they come in, don't really like show their full personality, but like he came in, just he really shows his whole personality. I, I love him for that. Dev, um, again, just preparation, and then like, er, like I say, like this, like confidence. That's I feel like that's the whole like demeanor of the D line. And then um, it was funny before the play, he was like, "I never get sacked before," like, and we put we put like our like defense on the field, and then that play happens, and he's like, "Holy like," and it was yeah. So like again, just preparation and just staying confident is probably the biggest thing for Dev, and he's done that in the off season. He's prepared his butt off the whole entire off season. For those moments like that. Thank you. See you guys. Biggest change, uh, probably more so game prep for me. Uh, how I attack um, O linemen. Of course, I'm I'm still playing a little bit of five, just uh, whenever they need me there. But it's like, of course, um, being uh, from one to. Two I at times to mainly a three, and then uh, at five at times. I mean, it's just the way I diagnose my rush moves and how I attack the run uh, when it comes to planning for a game. So I mean, really not much has changed process wise. It's just being able to uh, shift my focus when it comes to like seeing the opponents online. Yeah, man. Uh, Communication is always crucial. I mean, when it comes to defense and then offense, I can't really speak on them, but I know it's going to be crucial for them. But uh, defensive-wise, I mean, communication is always uh, critical because if you miscommunicate, then, I mean, you got busted calls. So just being able to echo the call, stuff like that, being able to identify what we need to identify and being able to play the game plan the way we need to, I mean, it's cr critical. So, I mean, we'll be all right. Just got to make sure that we uh, stay loud, do what we do best, and uh, be elite.
Mm-hmm. I mean, it. I mean, it feels great. I mean, we really don't focus too much on it. I mean, of course, we learn from it. Um, what we did well, what we didn't do well, uh, what we could do better coming into the next week, and uh, of course, uh, we we earn our own confidence. So I mean, we always build upon what we uh, set out to go do. So I mean, uh, it feels great, but at the end of the day, I mean, we put that behind us. I mean, that was a team who we uh, were set out to play one and zero championship season, and that one's done. So now we were focused on uh, Nevada, obviously. So. Corey, so this and advantages of having the guys back from last year, mm-hmm. um, just what you, how you've grown in a year as a unit. Yeah, uh, I mean, within the year as a unit, uh, as a D line specifically, or just a team. Uh, just as a as a group individually. Um, yeah, I mean, um, me. Uh, I'm gonna speak on me first. Uh, sure. Me individually, I just continue to see guys fill into those roles that we need them to fill into. Uh, that. That is um, one of the big outstanding things that I see, whether it's Anthony or whether it's um, Devin Eastern from last year and continuing to build upon what he's doing this year, and then Nate Becker, him too, and then people like Darnell coming back and doing what he does for the D-line, or even like young guys like Coy Parrish. I mean, he, he just hopped in, and now he's doing what he's doing. I mean, he's, he's going to be a great player. I mean, and we got a lot of people that have the potential to be great players here at the University of Minnesota, and that's what we are built upon, uh, built upon growth, built upon um, opportunity, built upon development mainly. So, I mean, just seeing how that continues to take stride as we continue to go throughout the season, especially in these first two games and then going into Nevada. I mean, Anthony is just a great player. Uh, he's he is what you see on film. Uh, he he's he's continuing to improve, and he he doesn't shy away from it. I mean, uh, I know he was just talking, and he probably said some great words. But um, Anthony's just um, he he's gonna be a great player. If, if he's not already, I mean, he's gonna really pop off as he continues to go out throughout the season, and then going into whatever he goes into next. So I mean. The main thing that stands out to me is just he's big and he's embracing his size. And then not only that, I mean, he's learning about himself as he continues to go. So, I mean, he's being – he's maturing into the player that we need him to be. And that's why I'm super excited about. Jalen, you mentioned all the different alignments that you're able to play to. And what's it been like this year being able to move the defensive line around in different matchups, especially in those passing matchups? I mean, it's uh, – it's nice um, having a lot of versatility on the D-line. I mean, of course, we got players like me that could play wherever needed to. And then we got players that, I mean, really, you got it everywhere on the D-line, whether it's uh, me, Anthony, Josh, Strig. I mean, everybody can play anywhere. So, I mean, being able to have that versatility gives um, uh, not only our defensive line coach, but our head coach and um, D coordinator to do what they want to do. So just being able to give us flexibility and range, essentially. So, I mean, love it right now. TJ said that he thought that was Devin Eastern's best game as a Baker last year. Did you see it that way? What did you see from him? Uh, so far, yeah. Uh, I've seen great games from Devin playing alongside him. And then, of course, past games where we used to have, like, KB and those guys. So, I mean, Devin has a lot more games to play. And, yes, this is his best game. But I know there's definitely better games to come because I've, I've definitely seen it in the past. So, can't wait to see it. Well, no, to, to just you as a defense, how many options there were the same drives that they were able to then go down and keep you off the field? I'm trying to find that count from what you called that touchdown stuff. Set it beginning again? The, just on, on defense, how nice was to have an offense that just okay. changed drives? Yeah. Um, it's always nice. I mean, I feel like anybody would say that as far as like a team goes. I mean, when you have an offense that does what they do and they're good at it, I mean, any defense that makes their job a lot easier. So I mean, I feel like that that goes for any team in um, NCAA and then Division One football, or even just in any conference in general. So I mean, it truly is a blessing. I mean, having Max, having Tay, having people on the O line, and then having the receivers that we have as well as well as the running back room. I mean, we got depth everywhere, and I know uh, Coach Fleck talks about that as well. So I mean, it truly is a blessing. I mean, I I, I can't thank them enough. So, truly love it. Anyone else for Jalen? Thank you, Jalen. Thank you for having me.
myself, I made some few mistakes that shouldn't happen as an older guy. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself. So I didn't, the grades don't really matter. It's just that I go out there and perform, and I did. So. Say that one more time. Uh, I think the unit, man, we progressing. We 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 falling along within the line. You know, um, Coach Cal does does a great job prepping us for the week and getting us ready to go against our opponents. So uh, I think that everybody, especially the young guys too, coming along too as well. Like you know, if you see Philip Dan get Philip Daniels get out there, you seen uh, Ashton Beers get out there. So it was exciting to see, for sure. Uh, issues with the run game, it, it starts with us. So if it's issues in the run game, then we need to fix it as a unit. And um, it has been brought to our attention. So uh, we're going to go out there and go to practice and, you know, go out there and fix it. What have you noticed about them and the Uh Physical. Uh, they fly around. They got athletes everywhere. So they got to be prepared for that. Um, they going to come out there and play, you know. It's, it's college football. So I think every team, we're going to get every team best shot. For sure. There is a path to improvement for you as you progress through the season and beyond. Uh, what are personal challenges for you? Uh, really no personal challenges. I mean, I, this is my third year. So um, at the end of the day, you go out there, it's just football, you know. And then, you know, I look to my left, look to my right. I know I got guys who got my back. And it's all about just playing for each other, for sure. So it's really no personal challenges, really. Uh, swag daddy right there, yeah. <laughs> he got that personality. Uh, he gave us a great message, man. Just his whole story and tied it into the, his uh, his speech as well. He did a great job with that. Uh, I think that um, it was very inspirational to hear that, you know, to see somebody go through that and be able to overcome it. And uh, we just, you know, try to tie it and bring it in with the culture. So I, I thought it was a great speech for sure. Yeah, man, we miss Daly, uh, Darius out there, man. You see what he can go out there and do. Not just run the ball, go out there and catch, catch the ball and make guys miss. So it's definitely fun watching and blocking for the guy. For sure, we missed him. What stands out to you about Ashton Beers? Uh, smart, physical, tough, always asks questions. Um, he's just a guy that doesn't really say too much, but he's going to go out there and work. Like that's, what the, that's the amazing part about it. Like I, I don't see how he, you know. He, he's just a worker, man, for sure. Really? Works his butt off. No, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I think he came along. Uh, Coach Debo did a great job with the whole defensive line, coaching those guys up. I think he's definitely one of the young guys that's, uh, you know, climbing to the top and is starting to understand the game. The game's starting to probably slow down for him, and uh, I'm excited to see what he, you know, what else he could do this season. But he's definitely a guy that his stock is went up for sure. Appreciate y'all. Roll the ball, Scott. You might go go. Um, you know how connected we were. I think um, as the game went on and from you know where we started and where we ended, um, I thought, you know, we thought we did really some really good things on offense. Um, obviously, there's stuff to fix. You know, every single game, um, but you know we love the progression of of you know how we competed, how we stayed connected throughout the whole game, and um, you know the points we put on the board was you know showcased by how how well we played together as a unit. You were, you were able to spread the ball around quite a bit. Uh, what was the key to that? Um, I think, honestly, just number one is the scheme. I think the coaching staff did a really good job putting a really good scheme together um, that allowed us to spread the ball around, and then also the guys getting to really good spots in the field. Um, the O-line did an amazing job protecting all game, and uh, ultimately that allows the pass game and the run game to be efficient. Um, but specifically in the pass game, um, it starts with them up front, and then you know everybody, everybody has to execute the scheme to the best of their ability. And the receivers got to really good spots in the field, and um, made some really good catches and, and had some really good, um, you know, yak after the play. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, pretty well defined in this in this spot. Um, I think Coach Harbo and his staff collectively um, have done an amazing job putting us as a team in a really good spot, um, communicating extremely well, um, you know, from Sunday on through the week. 
And um, it shows in the practice field, too. I think we're all um, on the same page really early in the week. Um, and it's a really good feeling to know that, you know, going on a Tuesday practice, which is the first day of the week, um, everyone's locked in and knows what the job is and everyone knows what the scheme is, um, even with stuff that we're putting in early. So um, that's a, a credit to the coaching staff communicating that, but also a credit to the players um, of, you know, staying on task and making sure that we're racing whatever the, the result was from last week and then moving on to the next week. A ton. I think you see that in the NFL a ton where, you know, running backs are, are really efficient in the, in the run game, but also in the pass game as well. And I think that translates to college, um, especially when you have really dynamic running backs like we have in our running back room. Um, you know, ultimately, the receiver's job is to, are, their, their jobs are to go make plays in the air um, and, you know, run game block as much as they can. But when it's time to pass the ball, ultimately, if we're getting a bunch of lift, the, the check downs are great. Um, and for the running backs to get you know, at minimum four or five yards is um, enough to keep the to keep the, the ball moving and keep the offense moving and hopefully move the sticks. Um, and so it's it's a, they're doing a great job with that finding space just as much as the receivers are, but the running backs are doing a great job finding space. And um, you could see a little bit of that last week. And so um, I'm proud of them for kind of sticking with it um, and you know for how much they've done in the past game so far. What stands out to you about Nevada? Uh, number one, they're they're extremely athletic. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of, a lot of film so far on them and. Um, they're for the first thing that stands out, they're athletic. They, they have a lot of playmakers on the defense side of the ball, specifically. Um, they have great scheme. I think they, they put a lot of guys in the right spots as best as possible. And um, they're very dynamic up front, too. And I think it'll be a really good challenge for us offensively, um, you know, to be able to battle, you know, throughout the whole game, but also just to figure out, you know, how can we put our guys in the best spot possible with um, schematic wise, but also to feel out the rest of the game of all right, how can we see. Does the defense change throughout the game? Will it change after halftime? Because um, it's still pretty early for us in the season. They're on their fourth game right now, I think. And um, they're going to have new stuff in for us. And it's, it's a, an every week thing where you have to see what you see on film and prepare for that and then react uh, to what they give you kind of towards halftime and through the rest of the game. Max, your first year, you're the first touchdown pass on the season, Christian Driver. Uh, what have you seen here out of him and his development since he's come here, both of you guys coming here as, as transfers? Yeah, the first thing that I've seen from him is um, his extreme – you know, want to get better. He's got the will. Um, you know, a lot of it's it's hard to find that where people are extremely athletic, and then also have that drive to get really better. Uh, so we'll get a lot better. And and Driver has that. Um, it's it's fun to be on the field with him. He's always asking questions. He's always getting to, you know, if he messes up or you know makes a really good play, it's it's the same thing. He comes back to communicate. Hey, did you like that? What what could we have done better there? Um, and he's also really open to feedback too. Um, and as a quarterback, it's fun to have those guys on the team. That's been the whole receiver room, to be honest. But if we're talking specific, specifically about driver, um, that's every single play. And I love you know talking to him after the play, even when he had a, a good play, or if he had a bad play, it's like, hey, let's do this next time to make it look better. And he's all in for it. So he's been a blast to work with. Max, talk about how your uh, communication has improved with all your receivers. He has 12 different receivers. Mm -hmm. so that shows a good group. Yeah, I think it, it starts in January. It's all the the stuff that you know isn't you know isn't shown outside of the walls that we've been working in. Um, and you know it's. It's the time spent outside the facility. It's the time spent inside the facility where no one's, no one's here, and we're doing the own, our own work on our, by ourselves. Um, it's the time in the film room with within, with no one else. It's just us. Um, that all all uh, you know buys into to what is on the field, and um, ultimately we can't have success as a unit if we're not doing the the work together outside the field, and outside the facility. Um, and that's showing. I, I think the. The guys, it's it's all about communication, like you said, and for us to communicate the field extremely well, we have to communicate off the field extremely well as well, and so that's why I think we had success last week. If the run game is going to become more efficient, what happens? Um, number one, I think we're always looking to improve in every single part of our offense, um, and I think even our pass game can improve, you know, extremely a lot more as well. And for the run game, it's just a matter of continuing to buy in every single day, um, and we can't be successful on Saturday if we're not, you know, extremely buying in every single day throughout the week. Um, and I think we, we're going to see that. We've been seeing that this week. And um, it's a mindset thing up front. And I think these guys have an extremely um, strong and, and brute mindset. Um, and I can't wait to see it come out throughout the season. And um, it's also the running backs on the same page as the O-line as well. They're setting up blocks and feeling space. Um, and that develops with time. Um, and I'm, you, you start to see it when you watch the film throughout the games, whether it's from, from week one to now or throughout first quarter to fourth quarter throughout the games. You can see it develop. Um, and it's a really tangible progression that you can feel um, between the running backs and the old line and I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, um, 
it was it was extremely inspiring. Um, his main message, you know, to me, it was was gratefulness. Um, that's something that I've written down in my locker when I when I first got here in January was empathy and and gratefulness and gratitude, um, and that's one of my big things. And so when he talked about it to the team, it was really cool, and it, um, I felt you know a really good connection with it. Um, you know, we I haven't talked a ton with Coach Monroe. It's because he's on the defense side of the ball. Um, usually we're battling um, more uh, during practice than we are communicating outside, and um, you know, it got it got you know for me to to be able to understand where he comes from. Um, and you know what he believes as a person uh, and his morals. Um, it just reassures me that you know this place is, is definitely home, um, and for our whole team as well. Like I, I think his message was one of the best that I've heard you know throughout my whole college career. Um, and I honestly, I, the, the first thing I said to him after was thank you. Like I really appreciate it. Like it really meant a lot to me. And I still, I kind of still think back to it too. I have a ton of notes from that from that meeting. Did you uh, think it was very cool. Yeah, it was. I think the first thing I said after the game was it was a really cool big brother moment. Um, we put so much work in together, um, you know, outside the outside the facility, off the field, um, and to see it um, come to fruition on the field for him was a really cool moment. Um, not just for him, but also for like Tyler Williams, for example, where he's put so much work out the field as well. And to see them connect and and communicate on the field and see it happen pretty efficiently, um, it was really cool. Kind of as you know, the leaders sat back and watched to what you know we kind of do on a daily basis. It also rubs off on the the younger players, um, so it was really cool for us to see that. Coach Marvel talked about your helmet communication and always knowing it's like intimate to your voice player. A couple years and a half from now, this segment to you, and yeah. stuff like that. How do you handle that ball? I mean, you talked about like just communicating with your 12 different receivers and the Harbo experience. Yeah, I think for the num number one thing for Coach Harbo is um, we, we're getting the play in and out as efficiently as possible. It's it's how how quickly can we transition from the last play to the next play where I'm still talking to my guys and then also figure out the next play while he's talking to me. Um, so that's the main thing is trying to figure out when I need to stop talking to my guys and listen to Coach Harbo and then how long he needs to uh, pause and wait for me to finish talking to the guys. So that's been an interesting dynamic. Um, and then also it's it's cool if we, you you know you get the extra few seconds before the 15 second uh, shut off um, to where we can actually you know, kind of listen together and, and talk together. I can't talk back, but he can talk to me like, hey, like, remember this check or remember this check. Um, and that allows me to communicate really efficiently with the guys. Um, ultimately, if I'm on the same page before he even talks to me, it's even better um, to know that, you know, we're on the same page and aligned um, before he can even say the play. I think it just depends on the, on the flow of the game. I really do. I think... Um, Coach Harbo has a, a reason for why he calls plays and when he calls plays and the tempo that he calls plays. Um, and our job is to execute whatever is put in front of us. Um, and I think that something that we've been really good at so far is when we have to transition to tempo, um, I think my receivers and my O-line and running backs and tight ends have been really great with that. Um, and communication is really big in, that, in those tempo periods. Um, and so you can you know, see how well our communication has been um, since we started the tempo stuff in week one and how it's developed from now. Um, and then also just the ability to transition between the two tempos, regular and huddle, and then also when we're up tempo. Um, that's what the helmet headset's really cool about is we can, it's not as much me looking at the sideline. It's like, hey, we're going to go tempo here. Let's go up tempo. Um, and so it's cool to kind of feel the, the flow of the game out that way and then also use that as a way of communication. Yeah, it's definitely a little different from from where I came from. It's um, there's you know there's a there's a there's a method to the madness, and I'm not going to say it's madness, but I think there's a, a way that you know we can get into the the best call for our offense every single play. Um, and I think Coach Harbo is really good at that. To where um, we want to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a situation where we're going to you know hope you know run for a loss or throw for a loss, um, depending on the defense. And there's a lot of checks that go into it where if we get this certain look, we'll we'll change it up. And that's pretty consistent with most teams and as you get to the NFL. And that's preparing our guys um, for hopefully the next level and their, their career aspirations as well, um, putting us in the best situation possible and um, throughout every single week to, to get our look in the best situation possible um, to where, you know, hopefully we can have a positive play every single time. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.